Hey everybody, it's Michelle. If you're just finding my videos, a quick rundown. My husband is deployed in the Middle East. Me and my family are moving to the Czech Republic and I'm starting a YouTube channel. So here is one of many and today's video is going to be all about booking your flights because we just booked our tickets the hell out of here and I am so excited to finally get going. Now, I haven't traveled with three kids by myself, but I have traveled with two the last time I traveled. Asher, who's playing with his monster truck right now, um, he was six months old. So this time around, my daughter is seven, Asher is two and a half, and Nolan will be one. So it's gonna be hectic, but it is a night flight that we booked, so I'm hoping that'll be a little bit easier on us. And yeah, let's just dive into So the first tip I have, if you can, book your flight as soon as possible. We weren't really sure of our timeline, so we just booked our tickets and we ended up paying a lot of money for a one-way flight. So if you can, if you know where you're going, if you know when you're going, just book as soon as possible so you can get the cheapest tickets. Airline tickets, however, do fluctuate. They do go up and down throughout the week. It is best to buy them on a Tuesday and avoid buying them on the weekend. Ever since I can remember, my mom always used kayak, even when they weren't as big of a site as they are now, and we still use kayak. I always find the best deals on kayak or Google Flights. Always, obviously, look around. I have I have heard the tip that you should look in incognito mode, so um, I guess the website doesn't like catch on that you're looking at one flight over and over again and possibly raise the prices. I've done some test runs with... You poo? Okay, yeah. good job. I have done some test runs with this. I personally didn't really find that there was a difference, but if that makes you feel better, then I recommend doing so. Also, just make sure you know what's included in the ticket that you're purchasing with budget airlines becoming more and more popular. A lot of the times they don't include a luggage, so just verify that for your own sake. You don't wanna show up at the airport with the luggage that you end up having to pay for. And same goes with your meals. Most of the time after you book your flight, you'll go to a page where it offers extras and one of those extras is probably a meal. If you're going on a long haul flight, a meal is always gonna be included, if not multiple meals. So I just remember this, this was something that I was like, oh my God, are they not gonna feed us? Or do I need to bring extra food? And they ended up feeding us. Now on this particular flight that we booked, we weren't able to select our seats. They just didn't give us an option to do that. But honestly, I never do that anyways. A lot of the times you have to pay to pre-book your seats. And unless you want like the very front row and you wanna use the bassinet, I just, I don't see a reason for it. Um, I am traveling with my children. So obviously they are going to sit us all together. They're not gonna sit my seven year old, two year old or infant baby somewhere where I'm not. So I just don't do that. I just avoid paying that cost. A lot of the times they sit us in the back which I really don't have a problem with. I like sitting in the back. Uh, I know the bathrooms are there. I guess that all depends if your baby is a light sleeper or not, but luckily that's just not a problem for me. I like sitting in the back also, so I can get up really quickly if I need to. Um, if I need to like coddle my baby or calm him down, that I can get up, go to the back where the little flight attendants hang out and where there's a little bit of room to kind of be out of everybody's way. So I don't have to walk down like an entire aisle to get there. Also, if you do want to use the bassinet, just know that it only goes up to six months. So I'm past the point of being able to use that anyways. Um, I did find these really great uh, inflatable stools that go in between the seats so I do have the option of laying my kids down which I think will be a great advantage I read a lot of great reviews and I'm really excited to use those so um, I wouldn't want to sit in the front anyways to have the extra leg space because um, I, I just don't think the kids would be able to lay down like that but I will do another whole video on actually traveling and getting there and show you guys some footage of the actual flight. Another tip I have, especially if you're flying with children, is do not book a short layover. That might sound all great and fine. Oh, we don't have to wait long in another airport before transferring planes, but 
I'm telling you, getting off the plane takes time, getting through security if you're going to another or another country if you're traveling internationally. Usually you do have to go through security again. There's just lots of holdups. So it's better than, you know, I'd rather book a flight with a three, four hour layover and know that I'm gonna make my next flight rather than perhaps having to wait even longer if you miss it. We will be traveling through Frankfurt and we have a two hour layover and that might sound like enough time, but if you've ever gone to Frankfurt, Fra Frankfurt, Frankfurt, you know that that's a huge airport and it's, it's gonna be a hassle. We're still gonna be rushing like crazy. I'm praying that we make our next flight. My mom has taken this exact same trip and had a two hour layover and her flight was delayed. She ended up missing her connecting flight. And so it is a possibility. Two hours isn't always enough time, especially when you're traveling with children. So that's definitely gonna be a tight one for us. I'm praying for the best, but the only other options I think they had were like nine hours layover so i was just like okay we'll just take our chance and hustle through um it does help if you've gone to the airport before obviously if you haven't just look at a map um so you have some type of general idea of where you're going when you get there so you're not wasting time looking at signs being really confused those are pretty much all of the tips i have on actually booking your flight if you're traveling with your family internationally if you are traveling anytime soon have a great flight safe travels and please consider subscribing following our journey and seeing more videos like this see you next time